Okay. Wait, so is he just gonna... Maple Story Live. May 2nd summary. Yeah, so we watched uh, Steve and Max was also there. A little bit. We had Cassandra. <laughs> Dude, he has the picture with him. <laughs> Where he <laughs> does this and then the other guy does that. Uh, he did this first and then someone said thumbs up and then he changed to thumbs up, but he didn't. <laughs> and now it looks like he's trolling him. She said, yeah, I don't know why he changed it. Yeah, there were like these scenes that they could stand in. There was a Zuckum booth, apparently. Oh, you had to do rock, paper, scissors, like with, uh... With mini, with mini Zuckum. It's pretty cool that he was just walking around there. He had some cosplayers. This is probably just like his standard facial expression, but he looks so like, oh god, why do I have to be here? <laughs> he kind of looks a little uninterested, no? He's like, this is part of the job description, I guess. Look at all these weebs. <laughs> Looks like he's so done with everything. I know, right? Yeah. It was pretty cool, though, how they made all these, uh, all of these scenes. This was like an interactive thing where they could zoom in. This was a bunch of old art and concept art and stuff. A lot of people gathered here on this side, <laughs> not so much on this side. Oh no, he's got antimatter water as well. Okay, we don't understand all the Korean, but thank you for that. Max is back! As you guys remember, uh, we had Kobe and then Sunny, I think, do one post that we both went over because they were part of the anniversary event for the 20th anniversary in Korea that's going on right now. But Max is back. You're in, he was in Japan for a couple of weeks and then Korea for a little less than a week. It was an amazing trip for many reasons, including being able to go to Maple Fan Fest with Steve and Neo. Apparently, they just put on social media that they were nearby but they didn't have tickets and they just got invited to go which is pretty cool definitely going to be making a huge post about that as well as the nexon computer museum in jeju island but first i'd like to give a huge thanks to kobe sunny and steve who helped out with the patch notes while i was gone yes they're very good did a great job but i'm really glad to, i don't have to go back and work on these now <laughs> yeah well we're all very thankful uh, Jimmy Maple Story General Director Kang Wonki just started the live stream and he talked about both the fan fest. Steve was in it, yes, Steve was in the picture. As well as game changes that will be coming up, he mentioned that some of them were supposed to be implemented in the summer patch, but they'll be putting them forward to the patch coming up in a couple of weeks. Okay, so they're actually taking them out of the upcoming summer patch in um, well, in June probably and actually releasing them early. So that's uh, that's interesting to see. So it's. It's going to be very uh, minor, so we're just going over the, the little changes that were announced there. Uh, there was a disclaimer that these points are all subject to change. Uh, they put that in our, you know, patch notes and in our, uh, um, what is it, the the quarterly announcement stuff? The roadmap, they put that as well, like, you know, it's all tentatively subject to change, blah, blah, blah. Uh, information related to getting tickets for the summer's new age update showcase will be released on May 9th. Which is already soon, but um, should be next week. But New Age is going to be the name of the summer update now in Korea 2023. So that will most likely be, in, in all likelihood, will be our winter update for 2023 going into 2024. At the end of which uh, our event will end 
uh, from for the jet job change. So these changes are still very vital for us because they could impact which class for all the jet players out there and people who have jets on their account. They will give you more information on which class you will most likely want to change your character to at the end of this update. Uh, the meso cost for upgrading symbols will be decreased in May. So again, May, we're usually about six months behind, so that's probably November for us. For arcane symbols, they're thinking about a 40% discount. The higher the symbol level, the lower the discount. Okay, about a 40% overall. And then for authentic symbols, they're thinking about a 25 to 30% discount for Cernium, 25 for Arcus, and 20% for Odium. Uh, I will say this already means a huge difference. I just leveled my Odium on two characters from four to five, which you might think, oh, that's pretty cheap. Uh, that's about 550 mil. That's that's over half a bill. So, I mean, of course, in that stage of the game, you have the money for it. Um, but this would me already mean a decrease of over 100 mil. So I would I would have saved 250 mil or something on those on just those two levels from four to five. The last level is over a bill, so. It does get quite a bit more expensive. This summer showcase better be Poggies. Yeah, a lot of people in Korea, of course, are hardcore banking on it. Uh, they are expecting wild stuff for the game. A lot of them felt like the anniversary event was like, eh, uh, or like, okay, but nothing to the extent that they are expecting, or you know, good, they expect them to make up for stuff right now. So. Uh, they better come out with some good stuff. And I think it's also why they're pushing this stuff forward, just to keep appeasing the player base and make sure that they have a lot of stuff that they're looking forward to so they have less stuff that they can be mad about. Um, and then they will be adding treatable symbol drops from monsters. The drop rate will not be very high and not be very high sounds like will be incredibly low, but we'll see. In Reboot World, these drops will be untradeable to differentiate the experience between regular worlds and Reboot. Untradeable, but transferable? Because some tradable... Tradability and transferability are two separate things. Now, uh, everything is already by default untradable, so I assume he means untransferable here, is what I'm guessing. Uh, they are meant to make it easier to catch up on symbol levels. In arcane river areas, the symbols will drop be dropped as selective vouchers. Yeah, okay, I've... Okay. Um, not saying I'm some kind of genius but that's what i've been saying for like three years so i'm glad they're finally moving in that direction uh and grandest area symbols will be dropped in cernium and arcus but not in odium uh again even just a low amount of them will already feel quite a bit better to be able to grind them out plus on top of that um giving some more value to drop rate gear i will say though in the beginning it's probably okay that they didn't have this because then people would simultaneously feel forced to be in drop rate gear and not be able to kill properly for being a drop rate gear. It's probably better to just allow people for a bit to get more power creep to get stronger first so that they can actually realistically kill in drop rate gear and then give you more stuff, right? It's always better to give you something uh, to go from like zero to one um, after it being on zero for a while, then starting at two and then going down to zero, even though you, uh, and then going down to one, even though in both situations you end up in one, in the former situation, you'll feel good about it, in the latter, you'll feel bad about it. Uh, there are currently no plans for an authentic catalyst. However, he said it might not be long before they do add it. Okay, uh, for people who don't know, in non-reboot, there is a arcane catalyst where basically you take a symbol and you turn it into a transferable, uh, um, so not tradable, I believe, but transferable equip. And that's how Sacrix gets keeps his symbol levels for all of his characters up, basically. Um, always traded turn everything, catalyst everything into a symbol, you lose some of the experience and you cannot fuse it with an existing symbol on a character. You ha it has to completely replace it. But let's say you have, you know, a character just with like level two symbols and then you just catalyst over from a character that has everything maxed. You'll end up at like uh, level 18 and something, like 18 and a half or something, I believe. So you immediately throw that in. You get a whole lot of stat. You get full arcane power. Well, not full, but like a lot of the arcane power. And then you just keep doing your dailies as you're level, le leveling that character up to 250. And then you finish up close to maxing your symbols by the time you get to 250. And then you just catalyst it over to the next character. Now, this is very good for building out your Legion to 10k like Sacrix did. But obviously now if you go back to those characters, they'll be very weak because they have no um, arcane power left. But so they're uh, thinking about adding an item like that into for authentic symbols as well. Um, 
yeah, pros and cons to that, of course. Um, it, it's more for casual to like low intensity players so that they can play another character without, you know, a completely different character that they can job change to and still feel that they can keep some of the progress and bring some of the progress of playing for a long time with them to the other character other than just, you know, your mesos and your transferable items and tradable items. Um, and you can keep that uh, that investment of uh, into dailies and bring that along, but again, that probably won't be available for reboot. Uh, and I'll, yeah, we'll just have to ask for some clarification here. But I assume they mean that they will be uh, untransferable, so you, that you can't put them in storage either and trade them uh, and transfer them between your characters, because tradable is between uh, accounts and transferable is within account between characters. So. Then, the third little thing will be, well, I guess, yeah, well, it will be the third thing. Uh, making pitched boss accessories, boss accessories, and guardian angel rings tradable. These changes are currently being reviewed. They might be added in May or in parts until summer update. Uh, as you know, before, they had, they were just completely untradable, which a lot of the endgame players in, uh, well, not completely untradable, but like after you equip them, I believe, which a lot of endgame players in, uh, in Korea and non reboot were very pissed about and then they added limited transferability with uh, scissors and that kind of stuff so it looks like they're going to go towards full transferability uh, because that's what the people really were asking for and that was one of the things they said especially when it comes to endgame why a lot of people moved over to reboot in droves because non reboot endgame just that's like a huge uh, huge barrier and a huge annoying thing that they have to try to deal with so for pitch set, uh, all items except for the heart, badge, pocket, and emblem. Uh, pocket and emblem are class specific, of course. Uh, badge, I guess because it's too rare, and the heart, it's temporary. Uh, you will be able to use platinum scissors of karma to trade them after being equipped. Oh, they still do have a, a limit of five, okay. For boss accessory set, for all items except for the shoulder the badge and the pocket. Well, who's gonna trade a Stone of Eternal Life? <laughs> uh, you will be able to use Platinum Karma Scissors to trade them after being equipped. For the shoulder, you will be able to use Silver Karma Scissors to trade them after being equipped. They have a scissor limit of 10. I still don't understand the scissor limit. Do they end up making less money if they remove the scissor limit? Because the scissor costs money, right? Well, I guess technically you can get scissors with reward points, I believe. And you could do some with mezzo. It doesn't work? Uh, it replied to you the first time. Make sure you don't have stream elements muted because you won't be able to see the message, uh, b -thing. Be sure you do slash unignore uh, stream elements. You might have had them blocked or something for spam in another channel and then you won't be able to see it here. But it definitely replied to your first message. You can see it right here. Uh, and then in Reboot World, the 5% minimum damage contribution in bosses for drops will not be changed. Oh, however, there will be... <laughs> what a roller coaster of a sentence. <laughs> why, ma why mention it if it's not changed? <laughs> like, ah, oh, well, not be changed. Oh. <laughs> Uh, however, they will be adding a visual icon to display if you have reached a contribution or not. Nice. I can't wait to be on the cusp of 5% and have it constantly like flashing above me. Like it's on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. <laughs> and it's like, oh, do more, less, more, less, more, less, more, less. That's going to be great. Um, I hope this will keep being expanded on. Um, yeah, just show us the percentage and just... Carry slower, please. Yeah. Well, I think what will happen is people will have to, especially people who do carries, I guess, will have to mention to people like, hey, the boss has this much uh, HP. Uh, you need to de deal this much damage. And most likely the person will just let the other, like if the other person does a BA, you can see how much damage they do. And until they say they reach the amount and then the other person can just go ham and, and blow it up basically. Something like that. Or if they're near the end and I don't know. I don't know why there isn't just like a percentage meter. Like if you open up the, the boss, um, you know, this one, if you create a party and then you open up the display HP, it could just have a, 
a percentage in there of like how much of the damage everyone has done so that you can keep an eye out for everyone and make sure that everyone does the damage. I mean, immediately a bunch of people started like throwing a hissy fit in the chat about like, oh, people are going to be <laughs> laughing at other people. It's like, well, then those people are just assholes. Like, it's just there for extra information to make sure that you can get everyone the value that they need out of the boss run, right? Uh, but it, it it's good. Like, this, to me, sounds like at least the community in Korea is giving them feedback on it. And they're changing it accordingly. Or at least, you know, with baby steps. Uh, trying to do something extra. But there, of course, the first thing was, first thing I said is there should be some kind of representation, some kind of measurement so that you can know if you even are meeting the requirements or not. And then the second thing is this 5%, 5% for all party sizes in all content seems too simple of a solution for how complicated of a problem you're talking about. Um, so I hope that the 5%, you know, gets taken. Uh, the percentage goes... Um, probably down a little bit for really big parties just because of pure support characters um because i i don't like the fact that, that they will feel like they have to make the support characters less supporty and then do more solo damage which they kind of did right for the um battle mage and for the mechanic to make sure that they can reach this five percent because then in turn i feel like that takes away from the experience as a support and from the value of being a um from the character of the class, you know, what the what the character stands for and what the role of the character is. Because then everyone is just going to be a main damage dealer, and then some just have more some more support than others. And then, you know, I, I don't want all the classes to become carbon copies of each other just with, like, a different skin on top of it, right? I want all of them to have specific things they're good at and then specific things they're bad at. I think that's not only just, like, okay, I think that should be the goal. The restriction is just so people in reboot can turbo boost boss mules. Bit of a panic change, but what can we do? Um, yeah, but yeah, I, but I think it's also probably in reaction to in Korea. You know, so many people. I think the population of reboot like five x in the span of three months or something, um, because of you know content creators and people just making content about how shitty endgame non. <laughs> Uh, non reboot is, and then people discovering like, oh, you could play reboot this whole time. Let's go play that. Um, and people moving over in protest or something by just still playing their game just on a different server. I don't know. It's a, it's a little strange, but um, yeah. Hopefully, as non reboot recovers, people move back over in Korea. Maybe they won't feel as bad about um, stuff in reboot needing to be limited as much. But yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so those are the three small changes. So changes to upgrade price to the drop rate and tra tradeability of symbols, both arcane and uh, sacred. And to the accessories, at least for non-reboot specifically. Um, so we'll see if those things all make it to the game before the summer update. But I guess there will be at least one more test patch, something like that, uh, in Korea before then. So if that goes into the live servers, we'll uh, we'll see that before then. But other than that, we're mainly waiting for the showcase and for the you know the big summer update in Korea called what was it again? New Age, which of course has a bit of an ominous name. <laughs> uh, so we're mostly looking forward to that. But yeah, so welcome back to uh, Max. Hope you had a great time in. Japan and Korea, and uh, but get to making those <laughs> those blog posts again. Uh, and if you guys haven't already, consider supporting Max on Patreon so you can keep supplying us with this good content. Okay, all right. Thanks for checking it out, and uh, I'll see you when there are more updates. <laughs>